Anita? Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay, I will start. Okay, by the way, thank uh, thank you, Miss yeah. uh, Novita. Is it Novita? Yeah, you are, I... you are Novita. <laughs> you are student right there or you are lecturer? Uh, I am student. Okay, very good, very good. All right, okay. So let me, before that, Assalamualaikum and uh, Selamat Petang or Selamat Sore, is it there? Okay, so... Uh, I have been told that uh, we have uh, one session uh, from me uh, about accounting, okay, introduction to accounting, and also a sharing session facing a new era in government accounting and reporting, right? So here, can I start, right? So uh, basic accounting today, I just want to share you about the accounting equation. Okay, so this accounting equation. So again, I just want to confirm with, with you, Novita. Uh, can everyone see my slide? Oh, can you share the screen again, Miss? Can, can, uh, if everyone see my slide. Yeah. Because I shared already my slide. You got my slide? Uh, no, maybe you can share screen again, Miss Doctor. Okay, 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 okay. I share screen again. Yeah. Okay, did you get that? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So uh, today I just want to uh, share with you about the accounting equation. Yeah. So accounting equation is uh, one of uh, the system uh, of uh, recording financial transactions, all right? To record financial transaction uh, with both numbers, which is basically is a tax uh, form of financial statement before preparing the uh, financial statement. Okay, so here, when we talking about uh, accounting equation, so we have an asset, we have liability, and also we have equity, all right? So we have all of those trees because we want to get the account to be balanced, all right? So here is it's considered as accounting equation and it's provide also an essential tool for billing customers, for example, for keeping track of the assets and liabilities also and determining of profitability and tracking the flow or we can call it tracking the cash flow. Okay, so this system is actually largely self-regulated. Okay, it's uh, just a simple, a simple business can use this as their assumption. Okay, so the system is actually largely as a self-regulated and designed uh, for the users of the financial st statement. Okay, whether it is uh, small from the small business and also up to the uh, large business. Okay, so here who are referred, uh, which is, uh, uh, for example, to um, as a stakeholders, business owners, for example, okay, so lenders, employees, managers, and also customers are very um, uh, need, in need of this uh, 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 balancing of asset liability and equity. And for example, stakeholders, will be utilized from uh, uh, this equation to the uh, financial statement because we have here uh, for business lending and investment decision also. Okay, so, okay, here we go, the second. Okay, are my slide moving? Okay, so good. All right, so this is the accounting equation where it uh, simplified as A equal to L plus E, okay? Asset equal to liability plus equity. So it is almost an uh, assumption from the double entry system of uh, recording transaction here. So here, when we um, look at this uh, uh, different types of account, for example, asset, liability, Okay, equity, revenue, and expense. So each account actually to be includes as sub account to record transaction details um, uh, in some kinds of double entry system. Okay, for example, 
cash assets that may include different cash and savings account. For example, in asset account, cash and cash equivalents, for example, account receivable, inventory, allowance for that for that property plan and equipment and so on. All right. So here for this uh, liability, for example, here, okay, sorry, for example, here for investment, let's say our investment account, right? So for this investment, uh, actually in accounting, okay, for example, they have, they got three here. Okay, so investment in stocks, investment in partnership, investment in bonds as well. Okay, this accounting has several specialized field and roles and it's um, sometimes uh, like a small business, okay, accountant, business accountants, I mean, may assume that uh, general roles which require preparing the records, uh, the accounting records as uh, bookkeeping, okay. And accounting professionals, for example, we're referring to the uh, IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standard, and maybe also the tax, in terms of tax field, uh, tax audit and also advisory focuses on federal, state, government, and local uh, tax uh, filing as well. So here, some kind of uh, audit rules also will be uh, one of the main thing uh, that support this uh, uh, equation. Okay, so as I um, as we look into first category, okay, first category as an assets, right? So this assets uh, consider as economic resources, which is probable future uh, that have probable future benefits. Okay, for example, finished goods. Okay, the companies can keep it and uh, sell it uh, to market it, right? So, for example, cash, they have to hold cash. They have to have a basic uh, cash. They have to have a, to control their cash flow, okay? Because they want to, uh, I mean, they, they, they want to uh, maintain their business uh, cash flow, okay? So, assets also, for example, tangible asset, intangible asset, for example, tangible property that we, we can see, okay, building, shops, and so on. Okay, so one of it also considered as asset certificate of deposit. Okay, bank from bank CDs, also uh, called as uh, asset. And not to forget the trading securities also considered as assets. Okay, there is business assets that uh, normally, okay, involve, okay, in... Uh, uh, in record keeping, okay? So in business transaction, right? So uh, in liability, for example, they got uh, accounts payable, okay, not uh, notes payable, accrued expenses and uh, so on, right? So, okay, for example here, amounts owed to creditors, okay? They have vendors and lenders, they have uh, creditors, okay, which is, uh, Referring to account payable, which is a ref, uh, referring to the supplier, also banking, bank, all right? So that's why sometimes uh, investment involving banking system and so on. Okay, so uh, other than that, we have a shareholder's equity. Okay, what is shareholder's equity here? Uh, it's an account, okay, that commonly, okay, a stock or capital of the business, and it's also uh, sometimes come uh, come up with additional capital, retained earnings, treasury stock, and uh, contract account, for example, for the business to start up the business or later they want to add, okay, another capital to the business, right? Okay, that is simple as I can, maybe as a uh, uh, first, touch on accounting basic that uh, the business or student need to know before they start the business, right? So they have also here uh, an assumption in accounting, okay, one of it, I take cash basis versus accrual, okay, cash basis versus accrual, because later uh, when uh, we want to embark into perspective of government accounting, we have to understand what cash, uh, cash base basis and also accrual basis later then. All right, so for those cash basis, normal, normally it's a revenue, okay, uh, accounts that uh, recognize when received, okay. 
So normally it is not a practice from the AAP. Okay, generally account, uh, accepted accounting principle, right? So what then different with uh, accrual basis? Okay, this accrual basis normally is a revenue recognition when earned and realizable. Okay, at the point of the uh, agreed, okay, to buy the uh, product or to accept that supplier is considered as accrual basis, which is accepted by GAAP or general accepted accounting principle, which is governed all the accountants and businesses, right? Okay. And um, okay, on this uh, expense expenses recognition, for example, uh, very easy. Uh, we look at the phone bill, at the rental, okay, at their account payable or what anything else that we paid, the business paid to the creditors, or the bills, or the uh, uh, for uh, rent, rental, or all all the. Uh, electricity bills, okay, so it's considered as recognized expense as incurred in the uh, selling general and administrative letter, and which is uh, include, okay, the depreciation of um, bill, uh, depreciation of the lorry, photo van, and so on, and include also the uh, especially in the large companies that they have amortization of, of a non-cash item and uh, others, okay? So here, okay, so expenses uh, is the most important important thing that uh, the uh, balances of accounting equation here, where it will uh, support the financial statement later, okay? So bringing this accounting equation, okay, for example, accounting uh, uh, assets equal to liability plus equity, which um, uh, which will be uh, very meaning meaningful to the uh, internal users. What internal users? So internal users uh, comes inside the organization. For example, okay, the managers, the line managers, the what we call the departmental managers, okay, or even clerk, they have uh, to have this basic knowledge of accounting equation, okay, because uh, what, for example, okay, if, okay, the owner bringing the uh, asset to the uh, company, which part they want to record, or when the company uh, spend, okay, or make a payment to, uh, supplier, okay, make a payment to the uh, electric provider, make a payment to the company. So which expenses should be included in this uh, record keeping system? Okay, because they have also, okay, to consider which one to, uh, which one is increase the assets column and which one to decrease the owner equity and uh, increase or decrease in uh, credits. Okay, so this is a very basic that uh, we can relate to the debit and credit system as um, uh, as a reporting or recording or basic recording in accounting transaction because this uh, debit and credit transaction can increase or decreases the balances. But when uh, before you make a T accounts, okay, or dub, uh, double entry system, okay, they have to actually uh, to look as an uh, overview of accounting equation first be before it comes to the debit and credit uh, transaction. Because here, okay, the preparer and also the management can easily detect, okay, which one is lower, which one is, is decreasing or increasing, okay, in terms of um, uh, this form. Okay, this form the basis of a double entry or bookkeeping, which um, normally requires equal debits and credits. And also, this one should be uh, equally, okay, equally, uh, I mean, equally understood that it must be balanced both sides, on the right side and on the left side. Okay, so this underlying transaction are recorded in detail actually on the general ledger 
Okay. And uh, later combined with the financial statement after all the transaction has been finished in their uh, yearly business uh, uh, accounting period. Okay, so normally the sum of debits always should be equal to the sums of credit. That, that is the balance of uh, how this accounting equation, uh, uh, the double entry system uh, works and it uh, reflect the accounting equation at the very first place they have been formed. Okay, so sometimes sums uh, of uh, debits and credit also represented on opposite sides in the balance sheet because we do have a financial reporting standard that uh, the, the, the accountant should be following. So these accounting uh, standards and guidelines and rules for uh, financial statement preparation, uh, combinations of a private industry organization in cooperation with um, government communities. If we refer to the basic of uh, to, to have a government uh, accounting policies, and also, it mostly referring to the DAAP and IFRS, where DAAP, uh, Generally Accepted Accounting Standard, will be uh, pra uh, practices in uh, US, United States, and it's uh, largely governed rules uh, for recording transactions and also to disclose all the business, uh, business critical information, especially to the shareholders of the business. Okay, so add up from this principle, we have International Financial Reporting Standard, IFRS, which uh, govern the international standard that should be following of all the uh, companies, right? So both system from these principles and rules uh, requires to use this double entry accounting, okay, referring to the accounting equation and debit and credit, while uh, normally it's both sets um, standards of similar similarity, high similarity. There are also significant significant differences uh, such as um, allowed inventory methodologies in calculating the inventories of stock and reporting as uh, asset revaluation re and revaluation. Re so this among the business types of um, uh, entities. Okay, so this accounting both for both. Uh, okay, accounting equation, debit and credit journal entries, general journal entries, and so on. Okay, self. Okay, we self. Uh, uh, diverse, actually diverse entities such as uh, individuals. Okay, individual entrepreneurs, small small entrepreneur, companies, trustees, governments, and charities. So, but today. We want to look uh, more perspective on uh, what's going on, what's happening in government accounting. Okay, so for example, um, for those limited limited liabilities company partnerships and so on, we have uh, in use of this uh, DAP, the uh, principles accounting and so on, with uh, the exception of governmental accounting. For example, okay, most accounting system which follow. Okay, this double entry system and uh, to be more on the accrual accounting assumptions of, and rules. Okay, so financial statement, for example, may have a slightly different uh, name okay, from um, uh, uh, normal companies uh, compared to the government, right? And depending on each entity types. Okay, so uh, basically, an income statement may also be called a profit and loss or earnings statement and as a, a statement of comprehensive income and so on, right? So here on the analysis, if we come comparing to the managerial uh, one, okay, is designed, okay, to, uh, to in needs of the managers and uh, not necessarily regulated. Uh, compared to uh, this uh, management accounting. Okay, so, and uh, last, but I think uh, not least for this, uh, uh, normally that they had, okay, for example here, if you look into which type of assets is um, normal, okay, so between this uh, government and also companies, okay, so maybe they have a, di a slightly different Okay, the uh, slightly different asset that can be used by the government and compared to the companies as well. Okay, so when we look at uh, here, uh, actually 
the combinations of asset liability and equity will make sense to all the business, uh, even the government and also non-government or non-profit organization that they have uh, in uh, now. Okay, so um, other than that, okay, other than that, maybe I can add to this uh, uh, basic of uh, accounting. Okay, so be behind this concept, okay, is that everything actually the business has come from somewhere, okay, from the small one, from the individual entrepreneurs and so on. Either it's a third party, okay, for example, such as lender, owner, or stock, uh, stakeholders also. And every dollar that invested to this uh, business holds attributed to a third party or an owner, right? So this means that uh, each thing a business has is classified as both an asset and a liability or uh, an asset and equity, okay? That represent in the accounting equation. So, so um, all right, so here, Assets, okay, again, all right, they have uh, gener generates, okay, intentionally generates economic benefit. For example, if you look into this uh, liquid asset, they have very liquid assets such as cash, okay. So cash is very liquid asset, okay, easily to convert, okay. So easily to use, okay, cash and cash equivalent, cash flow, uh, okay. So that's why this type of liquid asset, for example, cash and also inventory or stock of the product is very easily to um, convert it into cash, okay? So what's tangible asset? Okay, tangible asset, as we see here, for example, they have a property, okay, building, shop lots, and so on, in, uh, tangible, considered as tangible that everyone can see. Okay, the machineries, right? The va uh, the vehicles, right? The lorry, the machinery. Okay, so what then intangible asset? Okay, intangible asset, this is example, like a bank uh, uh, certificate of uh, deposit and also is uh, trading securities and also we can have uh, patents, okay, that they have to be patented, okay, from the company, a product from the company that has been patented, okay? Also, that intangible that we cannot see. Okay, investment in stock in bond, we cannot see, but they have to consider as um, uh, asset, right? So non-current assets, okay, they have also non-current asset like uh, account receivable and uh, so on. And cash, uh, uh, cash considered as uh, current assets, right? So for those non-current assets other than uh, cash, uh, inventories, and so on, okay? <clears throat> So uh, what else is to be in the liabilities here? Okay, so amount that um, uh, owed to the creditors, vendors, and also lenders. So this uh, liability is considered as a uh, financial obligation. Okay, it's uh, referring to debt and liability, and it's definitely the most dangerous type because uh, the uh, company should be aware of their liability. Okay, they can be a vital part of the company's operation as well, and uh, it's incurred in both day-to-day -day base, uh, day-to-day uh, transaction, uh, business transaction, right? So what's then a current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and contingent liabilities that uh, include this part of liabilities? For example, current liabilities that has been mentioned, uh, like uh, account payable, interest payable to the bank and short-term loans, for example, is considered as current liabilities, which is can be uh, repay in one year basis, right? So what's long-term liabilities now is anything due, okay, in more than a year, okay, means long-term loan, right, notes payable, bond payable, normally it takes longer uh, period that uh, the, the, or the business has to pay. Okay, so it's also uh, as a, considered as a business debt schedule and we got another basic contingent liabilities, for example, obligations that might happen at any time depending on the occurrence or outcome of another event, okay, such as a lawsuit, right? So they have few types of liabilities, right? So, uh, okay, then 
when we refer to the shareholders equity then okay so this is uh, like a money value to the business to the owners in a property after liabilities are accounted for they have to calculate okay they have to uh be aware how much these assets those they have to minus the liabilities then it will represent how many shareholders equity at that time so here, for example, lenders, okay, third parties typically have first claim on a company's asset exactly, okay, how the, this value is calculated can be different, okay, so in terms of market value, right, is the current price which investors should be uh, choose, which investors should be uh, to, uh, to predict uh, the investor's future value and so on, and this Equity capital, uh, always referring to the preferred stock, common stock, and treasury stock, and also retain a name. Okay, so before we move to the uh, government uh, accounting perspective, can we have um, a short quiz here? I'm preparing it from, from Kahoot. Yeah, maybe we can have. Can, can we, Novita, have a short quiz for this session? Just, just enjoy the. Just um, I mean, just we have fun on it. Can we, Novita? Can can we have that? Wait, I post the how to post this. Where is the um, okay? I post in chat box for that Kahoot. Very simple one to just the fun. Uh, okay, can you get that? <laughs> just a fun uh, basic accounting, just a fun basic accounting test. I mean, just uh, for fun. So can everyone look into this uh, Kahoot? I just uh, forward the link. Okay, can everyone get on the chat, chat books uh, on the Kahoot? Just, uh, I think five minutes, five minutes, five minutes uh, quiz. Okay, fun quiz, just for fun. Okay, just for fun. Uh, may I know about pin of Kahoot, miss? Uh, yeah, I just sent to this, wait. Eh? Yeah. I, I sent to you. 
uh, to the chat chat box. Okay, now you can get it. It just for fun, for basic accounting, just about the asset liabilities to test your. Did, did you get that, Novita and all? Mr. Daniel, why you look so serious? <laughs> Mr. Daniel. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, so sorry, but I'm trying to get into that link. But right. whenever I put my nickname, then mm -hmm. I want to go deep, go uh -huh. further. It is keep disconnecting, ma'am. Oh, is it? It's yeah. okay. It's okay. Maybe you can so, try later. Yeah. Maybe, uh, I can't go further. You. It's okay. Okay, maybe you can try later. It's just for fun. Actually, I'm preparing for all of you. Okay, but uh, never mind. Okay, so I proceed to the next. Um, uh, okay, I proceed to the government accounting, right? As a perspective of uh, uh, from the topic that has been set up, right? Okay, so no problem, right? So just get... Uh, Our new, okay, our return. Okay. Okay, can you get my slide now? Everyone, can you see? Rajesh Rari, Mufasa. Yep, ma'am. It is okay. visible. Yep. Okay. All right, right. Good. Okay. So, what's actually, uh, um, as a sharing, okay, just as a sharing, maybe uh, any one of you uh, know uh, or understand more about this or explore more before about this, okay, towards a new era in government accounting and reporting. This is uh, from only my uh, perspective of uh, uh, having okay, research on the government uh, this uh, five years time, right, uh, for government and also non-government uh, organization. Okay, just take it easy. So now um, about this um, um, government, all right? So most of the, uh, I mean, moving along, okay, the government finance and accounting journey, okay, so global financial crisis from the global financial crisis and the subsequent sovereign debt crisis that have brought to the light, uh, to, have, uh, to has been set up, uh, uh, this government perspective in accounting and reporting uh, come uh, it, it came from a uh, price waterhouse purpose that they, uh, they they alert about the government accounting and reporting okay because of that the lack of transparency in public finance and uh, poor public finance management okay so may put at risk government's ability to service large uh, public debts and mix their welfare um I mean, commitments and other public service that deliver this uh, objective as well. Okay, so there is now actually growing recognitions of the importance of appropriate, um, I mean, this uh, importance of um, appropriate accounting and financial management uh, in the public sector. We call it government as a, considered as a public sector and as a key means of achieving sustainable public finances, okay? For example, these governments need to step up actually and adopt sound of um, uh, transparent in terms of accounting in and reporting rules, okay? It comes as part of uh, the democratic accountability process and the wider public finance management. So here, when you look into uh, this, okay, so, spectrum of accounting practices okay so when we refer back that um, my previous slide of uh, cash and accrual basis of accounting so we have had here on uh, figure one that representing the spectrum of government accounting practices for example they have um, uh, this uh, in the figure one they have one two three and uh, four of uh, 
practices DAP. Alright, so for this cash accounting, okay, modified cash accounting, modified accrual accounting, and accrual accounting as well. Okay, so now what cash accounting means? Okay, they have a cash payments and receipts that are recorded uh, as they occur. Okay, when you receive cash receipt, then we uh, consider as cash accounting basis. Okay, now modified cash accounting basis where this cash receipt and disbursement that are committed in the budget year are recorded. Okay, yearly. Okay, and reported until a specified period after year end. Of course, when um, they set up as accounting period one year, okay, they has a modified cash accounting and modified accrual, uh, accrual accounting as well. Okay, so from this uh, perspective of modified accrual accounting, they have accrual accounting uh, that um, has been used, okay, that uh, also as a certain as passive uh, classes of assets that we refer to the uh, assets, non-current asset liabilities that are not recognized, okay, that are not recognized yet compared to the accounting equation that uh, from the basic that we have uh, Ahead uh, previously. Okay, so for this um, account, accrual accounting, normally these uh, transactions and economics events are recorded and reported when they occur, when they occur at that time. And it's um, normally regardless of uh, when cash transaction is occur. Okay, not paid yet. Also, we have uh, uh, all the expenses that has been not paid yet, or they buy the property or anything. So is considered as a pro basis. We the companies or the business have to be recorded them. Okay, so for this view in the government accounting practices are uh, generally um, classified in these four. Okay, so moving from the least to the most sophisticated uh, side of the spectrum, uh, cash accounting modified cash accounting and accrual accounting. Okay, so these classifications is one of the four categories that requires uh, like a judgment and is inevitable, uh, inevitably somewhat uh, subjective, very subjective, right? Okay, so from this basis, okay, we know that all of government um, <clears throat> Okay, so from this perspective, we know that all government needs this uh, four, okay, cash accounting, ca characteristic of this four, cash accounting, modified accounting, and also they have uh, modified accrual accounting and also accrual accounting, depending on what they have been, uh, what types of government, okay, because sometimes in government, they have uh, local government, they have federal government, and also they have also uh, public university that uh, considered as government university, right? So here, um, when we look into this, cash accounting actually has been the primary method, right, of uh, um, um, uh, of platform in the public sector for many years, and it uh, remains as in place for many government. Okay, they use cash accounting and cash-based practices all right, are still used by almost half of the governments in the world. And while the other half, okay, for example, they follow the accrual basis and modified accrual basis. All right? So um, uh, and when referring to the uh, analysis of from PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, PwC, they have Morning, Dr. Suraya.
Mohon ditunggu terlebih dahulu untuk para peserta karena narasumber sedikit ada kendala di networknya. Terima kasih. Okay, sorry, my line is not that stable, but uh, now I can look at this, right? So, <clears throat> if you look into these um, types of um, uh, four characteristic, okay? So, government accounting around the world, right? Around the world, um, in five years here, they have an increasing of 119% of application of accrual in accounting in the next five years. Okay, means that accrual accounting is the most important and relevant to the government sector. All right, so looking at this uh, uh, picture of, of uh, figure three, okay, government accounting around the world in the five years here, we see a clear trend with many countries initiating accounting reforms and uh, also declaring their intention to modernize their accounting system. Okay, so from this 71% of uh, government surveys say that uh, they will apply accrual accounting, okay, in five years as compared to the 63% uh, at the time of 20, before 2013, right? So this uh, reflects this 119% increase in the use of accrual accounting compared to the, the current situation, but also represent uh, increasing about 8% uh, in trend. Okay, so the most important thing here where uh, from uh, PWC here, they have a cash was not giving uh, us enough to understand properly assets and liabilities, right, uh, of government, and it was not giving a sense of accountability either. That's why they choose the accrual, accrual accounting uh, basis to be implemented in the government sector. All right. So here, uh, uh, actually, is um, uh, expressed from uh, Rose Campbell. Okay, uh, Deputy Director of Government in uh, Financial Reporting, and also is uh, she's the treasury of uh, uh, one of the uh, most popular company in the UK at that time. Okay, so <clears throat> here when they move towards this uh, accrual accounting, it's about to get the foundations, uh, uh, the basic accounting foundations become. Uh, easily to understand it, easily to implement it. So, uh, because when we refer to the objective of the financial statements, which to provide, okay, to provide information that is very useful to wide range of users in making the evaluating decision about the location of uh, some kind of resources and to demonstrate the accountability, okay, of the government for the resources that they have been in, entrusted to it. Okay, so here, objective that can only be fully uh, achieved by applying this accrual accounting, or I say it again, accrual accounts provide, okay, accrual accounting provide a comprehensive view of uh, government uh, assets and liabilities as well, and its financial performance and cash flows of the uh, accounting period under review. Okay, so this accrual accounting principle will reflect then the long-term economic event, okay, the long-term economic impact of uh, some kind of political decision also in the financial statement. So this cash accounting system simply not to allow this happen. That's why a cloud accrual accounting basis is most the relevant one is most useful in government accounting. So here in when government needs to set up and provide information that uh, delivers real insight okay, into public financial management and goes to the decision-making process, this will require more robust accounting system in the public sector and worldwide and with reporting that done on a consistent basis. For example, okay, through international performance of uh, accounting, 
and equivalent of full reporting on their liabilities, assets, and equity. So this will in turn contribute to the long-term stability in capital market by increasing the quality and reliability of uh, the, uh, the trusted uh, agent and government and to restore, to help to restore back, okay, their confidence in their uh, ability to manage the fiscal balance as well. Okay, so when we look into this, uh, cash was not giving us, okay, and trust understand properly asset liability of government and was not giving a sense of accountability either. Okay, so in terms of accountability, they should be implemented in this accrual basis system in the government. Okay, so now the expected <coughs> trends towards accrual accounting among OECD and non-OECD countries uh, will become in need. Uh, recently okay so the momentum of to be better uh, public accounting okay is um, uh, like a global trend with more and more jurisdictions around the world adopting accrual uh, accounting practices or putting in place plans to do so so in OECD countries especially accrual accounting is generally well established with certain exceptions Okay, with certain assertion that uh, nevertheless, okay, um, of the seven percent of countries, okay, that currently follow cash or modified base, uh, basis of accounting indicate that they expect to, implement, to implementing full accounting over the next five years, that bringing the total of adoption rate raise into eighty percent of uh, having uh, this accrual basis accounting. Right, so this is very important for um, governmental accounting, where accounting reforms, okay, are often initiated as uh, uh, part of a wider finance reform that is funded by organizations such as uh, that we already know, such as World Bank, International Monetary Fund, International IMF, and all um, over these OECD countries. Okay, so. Accrual accounting here, expected trend to accrual accounting by continent. For example, here there have been Africa, Latin America and Caribbean, Asia, Europe, Oceania, and North America. Okay, in this uh, recent five years, they have uh, this graph along with, because the timeline actually for adoption of uh, cash basis was uh, from, okay, before 2013. All right, so when we look at this uh, accrual accounting uh, presented by this figure of five, okay, so the message is that there have been a stringent shift is expected in uh, Africa and also Latin America to process this central uh, of the central governments that apply accrual accounting that should be increased from 16% uh, and 30% to 84% as well as 75%. Okay, so the increase in particularly, okay, in Africa where 17 countries included in the scope of the survey indicate that their intention, okay, to move to accrual accounting, although it is uh, certain that responses may embed some degrees of uh, optimism in timing of the reform also. Okay, so where the vast majority of government, okay, so support this accrual accounting basis, right? So this is from a European uh, point of view, where from EU perspective, wide range of public sector, public sector accounting standard currently result in a lack of physical, transparency and comparability due to incomplete and inconsistency of primary accounting data, which is more dependent on the cash basis. Okay, so from this um, research also, 77% of government that will apply accrual accounting in five years will use IPSAS, okay, International Performance Standard of Accounting or similar standard. Okay, this is showing from the uh, that you, how important this accrual accounting basis that should be implemented in all sectors, all government sectors. Okay, so how about cash budget? Okay, cash budgets normally they have uh, involving in 82% of government that use cash budget before 2013, actually. And this is the comparative trend towards accrual accounting and budget 
okay, where they have uh, accrual accounting and accrual, accrual budgeting and also accrual accounting on the uh, figure uh, seven here. And um, towards that, if we look into this uh, figure seven, okay, they have um, comparative, showing comparative uh, trend towards accrual accounting here. The number of governments, okay, the number of governments using accrual budgeting and also uh, budgeting practices that are mostly accrual based is expected to increase also beyond 2018 into 2023. Okay, that uh, increase from here, if you look uh, from 80% to 48%, it shows that many governments that responded. Uh, we move to accrual budgeting at the same time they will move to accrual accounting also not using cash accounting anymore right so reflecting uh, today's uh, desire of uh, to achieve greater consistency between the two uh, there are, seems to be a lot of enthusiasm that embedded in the responses especially regarding okay the timing to get accomplished but the ambition should be declared the same to focus on accrual Okay, so for those countries that applying the accrual basis of budgeting system, it will consider it as important tool. Okay, for ensuring a more timely recognition of the complete cost, okay, of the complete cost of government activities to, to, to make a normal, okay, between uh, resource balances and so on. Okay, so uh from accrual budgeting okay uh, was uh, has been introduced in combination of accrual accounting it also can um, ensure that uh the, the right decision make, making has been uh, processed and all the respondents okay or stakeholders to confirm that closer the budgetary basis is to the accounting basis Right. So the more the comparison of budget, for example, and actuals will be used for decision making purposes as well. And this government that uh, prepare the budget on the same basis as the accounting show a more dynamic practices of using the variance analysis and the reconciliation for decision making purposes as this uh, uh, always analyzing okay the comparisons that more embedded in the procedures and perform in regular accrual basis for example accrual counting basis and in some example they have a budgetary comparison uh, budgetary outcome for both uh, review revenue and also uh, expenses that re reported on a monthly basis and communicated to uh, their parliament especially for those federal government that um, that that uh, presented the fi their financial statement. So countries, for example, for they have an uh, important gap between accrual and accounting, be, um, accounting based and cash budgetary control based are more likely to do the reconciliation or balancing the, uh, between budget and accounting on an annual basis as well. And this is used, of course, for those decision making process. All right. So in, in government also, they have this enterprise resource planning, ERP, that uh, most, uh, for example, in maybe in Malaysia and also Indonesia has been implemented this, that is evolution that government expect to end ERP systems that the main areas of reporting in those 2023 and on. Okay, so they have types of um, in IT information system that used to manage the accounting. Then also this expected evolution, right, to use ERP system in the main areas of reporting also. So from their uh, survey, okay, it shows that this enterprise resource planning or ERP systems are commonly used by government to manage their accounting and their budgeting processes as their intern internal management reporting for those uh, departmental uh, managers, departmental um, uh, all those sector in uh, organization. <clears throat> so here, fifty eight percent of uh, government surveyed use ERP system to their accounting, and also they manage their budgets. And for example, they have also a regular software in run of uh, mainframe of operating system to the second mostly used 
type of IT, IT combination of financial reporting purposes, while a limited number of governments still largely make use of spreadsheets. Okay, so this is very important. Okay, accrual basis accounting, they have some software, they have system, they have for, formal system uh, according to their needs, according to their day-to-day uh, -day basis. Uh, uh, recording of account. Okay, so based on the respondent feedback, okay, they also expect that proportion of government using an ERP of the system to increase over the next, after 2020. Okay, so because ERP also can do the budgeting, can, can always uh, monitoring from this uh, ERP system. Okay, so when we look into these major changes in IT integration and also financial accounting is a greater integration of IT system actually, because this is a key priority and a major challenge for most government to have the specialists, to have the software, to have their, um, their budget on uh, um, to have in uh, to, to keep the system in place uh, and so on. So uh, from the survey, it suggested that the level of IT harmonization here, okay, across the ministries and major government, okay, entities at the central government level is an area of concern. Means that the federal government, okay, should be. Uh, uh, synchronized with this IT harmonization, okay, in terms of uh, in terms of using this ERP, okay. So only one, okay, in two respondents consider that the government IT system are currently either very or somewhat harmonized. But it's actually from the survey of thirty four percent government declare that their IT system are very of somewhat fragmented, okay, not well. Uh, design that to suit their uh, core business in the government. Okay, a certain level of differentiation in uh, between IT solution across ministries and also uh, government agencies is understandable. Okay, as the tools are designed to fit the specific goal and needs uh, of each individual public body, considering the wide variety of assignment they have to understand. Okay, what ministries serve. Okay, what uh, objective of the ministries and uh, what is the business of the ministry? Okay, so that they can okay, create the proper IT system, IT integration that we call harmonization between, okay, between the accounting system and also the suggested software. Okay, so however, in this trend towards the greater harmonization is identified and uh, even if the situation remains contrasted between the countries, especially and increasing numbers of government are implementing business IT or business analysis alignment strategies that um, can uh, have that harmonization and integration of somewhat very harmonized. Uh, and uh, there are also significant effort will be required to achieve this, right? So any more, okay, government mainly focus on compliance, of course, compliance and control, but also indicate the desire to improve efficiency insights, okay. From this figure that we have in uh, from PWC's there's final assessment framework, they have been uh, compliance and control there. Of course, there have been a compliance and control where uh, this many governments are see that this accrual accounting implementation as an opportunity to set up ERP and also to upgrade the system, incurring costs that beyond strict accrual accounting compliance and they can control over this ERP system. Okay, so I have a few more. Okay, on this um, uh, compliance. Okay, so because uh, this uh, uh, PwC's finance assessment framework that has been using to suggest this uh, control and compliance of accrual basis accounting. Okay, so when we look at, at this, okay, when we look at, at this, okay, actually the government may implement the centralized transaction processing and some instances uh, shared services. 
um, service centers as a key features of their um, uh, IT reform and also compliance because here, okay, so increased administrative efficiency to increase the administrative efficiency can be seen to generate a return on the initial investment as well through a reduction of both in processing time and in administration costs for individual reporting entities. So we have more streamlining and automatic reporting system, fewer resources, for example, are required for transaction processing tasks, and staff may instead be used for value-added tasks such as data analysis and also forecasting, not to forget the budgeting process, the cool budgeting processes, and this integrated of IT system lead to a higher degree of efficiency, more effective data processing, and the production of more reliable information. And then, uh, therefore, more uh, being an enabler for better public financial ma management for private for public uh, as a government. So, how about cost accounting? Okay, so this cost accounting and performance management and also fixed asset management, long term planning and forecasting are still the major areas that require improvement to support this. Uh, IT integration and ERP as well in the core basis uh, uh, a context of uh, government. Okay, so I think I have one, two, okay. So this also to support the preparation of government financial statement where they have maybe, okay, can be quarterly basis also. And the current timing of publication of year-end financial statement cannot be expected, okay, to meet the needs of the financial statement users. And this cannot make effective economic decision based on historical information that is two years old. Okay, this is uh, uh, experience from the director of the general in the Asian countries. Okay, last one. Okay, government key priorities for the next five years are accrual accounting based on in, um, IPSAS or similar or FRS or government accounting standard DAS, adoption, greater integration of IT system. Okay, capacity building and improvement of management information systems, systems of course, to, to centralize of their ERP. Okay, to centralize of their uh, IT and also software of accounting that meets the need of an uh, of a, of a ministry or federal government because uh, every federal government maybe they they need different types of software to support uh, this integration of the accrual basis of uh, government accounting. Okay, we. That okay, I end up my uh, lecture today. Okay, maybe Novita, can we have a question and answer session? Thank you. Thank you so much for the material, Dr. Sulaya. For our participant, if you want to ask questions, you can raise your hand or you can write in the room chat. For first question, we have two questions from audience in the YouTube from Ms. Dia Rahmi. May I ask the question for the keynote speaker about how to make the reporting of the accounting system on the state's management of the finance with digital method? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dia, Ra Ra Dia Rahmi. Okay, so here, uh, accounting system on the state management remains state level uh, government okay so um okay as i uh, presented just now okay actually every government okay every um public sector or state government and federal government they have different uh, needs and serve different uh, stakeholders right so they are also they are also working in different accounting um, transaction or different accounting needs or different day-to-day -day, uh, business accounting. Okay, so here, when this accounting system that need to be suited to the end organization, they have 
to make an uh, research and development of uh, first. Okay, to make a research that which software should be integrate enough to uh, maintain or to cover up all the business transaction that they have been made. Okay, because of course, if you compare uh, a local authority, okay, local authority and also federal government, so they will need different software. They will need different digital system, okay, to be in place in their day-to-day -day, uh, business accounting or accounting to record the accounting transaction because they serve different needs. So it's only, it's normally they will, um, for big companies, they will invite, okay, the specialists to look into, okay, which software that needs and support, right, their uh, public, uh, their government, whether state, local, maybe different with federal, maybe different also with the university, okay, that I mean referring to the government-owned university. Right, so thank you. Maybe another question. Okay, and for the last question, this is question from Mr. Amin Tohari. What it what is the fundamental relationship between the basic accounting equation, Miss that all? And thank you so much. Thank you. Uh sorry, Navita. Come again. What is the difference between between the basic accounting equation? And is it, right? is it enough? Basic uh, account. Okay. Okay. I think maybe uh, that question, <laughs> that question is not complete. Okay. So maybe they want uh who who who's raised the question, Novita? Okay, maybe uh basic accounting equation, right? It's just a perspective to understand, okay, when Okay, the asset should be increasing when the asset is increasing, when the liability is increasing, and also how much the owner equity invested the capital into the business. Okay, so, okay, so this is the basic one, okay, basic understanding of accounting that make the user, make the student, or makes the uh, business owner, small business owner to understand where it come from okay why expenses we have to minus okay where why liability we have to minus why liability decreasing the assets of the company it's just a basis concept of accounting equation where they also have to be balanced on the right and uh left side okay if we comparing comparing to the uh, double uh, uh, double entry system, right? Double entry system, we record both sides also, but it's some kinds of T accounts that record the accounting transaction uh, in monthly and quarterly basis. Usually, they have a quarterly or monthly basis also for debit and credit system. But here in the accounting equation, we record every day. Also in uh, double entry, we record every day. But in terms of different kind of uh, use or different kind of presenting, it is different. If you look into uh, the format, okay, the format also still different. That is um, my answer. If you mean to compare basic accounting equation also with the double entry system. Okay, so thank you, Novita. Thank you so much for the oh, we have we have Miss Rajasvari for the question. The time is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Afternoon, uh, Rajasvari. Yeah. Um, my name is Rajasvari. I am from Information System Department student of Stockholm University. So I would like to ask um, one question to you. Um, uh, actually, I'm really concerned about a proof. So any um, recorded transaction in content accounting needs a proof, right? Uh, especially a legitimate source, legitimate source which will provide that proof. But how mm -hmm. to differentiate between 
um, fake proof and the legitimate proof. Proof because nowadays we can easily generate um fake proof, but it can be looks like a legitimate one. So, yeah, that's my questions. Okay, thank you, Ajis Rory. I think yeah. maybe so uh, about legitimate and what what fake proof, legitimate fake fake proof, fake proof or legitimate like proof. A, yeah. Uh, because in okay. accounting, whenever we want to record any transaction, we need a proof, right? Uh, for instance, mm -hmm. like a receipt or mm -hmm. bank notes. Um, mm -hmm. everyone nowadays can generate a fake proof. So fake how proof, to difference? Right? Yeah, how to differentiate okay. it? Okay. So actually, uh, an organization, uh, an organization should set up okay the officer that need to approve that need to endorse all the document that has been submitted for example okay so other than that in the system okay normally they require a high level of security as i know okay as i know and I, as i assess okay few of uh, government uh, system to be one of uh, the uh, my analysis but the thing is how to uh, how how to differentiate between fake and also the legitimate approval okay uh, they have to set up a few stages or few people to approve it or to to make an endorsement uh, by stages in the system they they should set up the stages of um, uh, making approval, making endorsement, and so on. I, I think it's better to have a um, few levels of approval and endorsement in the system, as I know, as my experience before. My uh, justify your question. Can I answer? Uh, Just but, um, yes, is it possible, ma'am, to recognize uh, between the fake one and the legitimate one? Is it common happen in of organization they, that uh, they will get a uh, fake proof? Something yes, like that? of okay. course, everywhere. Now, everywhere, a lot of scammer. Okay? okay, but the thing is, uh, for example, federal government, they have their specialists in IT and computer programming person that they hired okay they have to in technical basis okay i cannot answer because not my specialist my, not okay. not my special area but maybe the engineer programmer and uh, other specialists they, they have that uh, in a system or in their plan to to, to avoid all the fake uh, transaction or the fake uh, uh, Fake, uh, a fixed document fake and so on. Okay. Okay, Rajesh Ah, okay. uh, okay. Fake proof, Got yes. It. Thank you. Thank you for answering. Thank Welcome. you, Ms. Mapita. Okay, thank you so much for answering. I think it's very clear answer from Professor Before I close this event, uh, I will take a picture for documentation for our participant. Please open your camera. We will take a picture for documentation. I will gain of one, two, three. Okay, another one. One, two, three. Smile. Thank you for your keen cooperation. Finally, we come to the end of visiting lecture today. We would like to say thanks to Dr. Suraya Ibrahim. For the wonderful information, thank you for sharing your knowledge. We hope this information will be beneficial for our audience. And I hope we get meet again at another event in the future. Also, I would like to thanks for our participant for attending this class and make this even more interesting. At least we hope to have more collaboration in the future. The visiting lecture for today and here. We hope to see you soon. Thank you and have a nice day. Yeah. Thank you, Novita. Have a nice day. Thank you all. Matiin nga ba ba is? Bye.